It's a, not an uncommon complaint for people to be referred to us either because of a what we call a post-nasal drip where they have a sensation of mucus running down the back of their throat or for sinusitis because of the same symptoms or for difficulty swallowing. And what we have found um, a fair amount of time is that those people may be in fact suffering from what we call extraesophageal reflux. We think of classic reflux as heartburn, indigestion, belching, things like that. But you can have both esophageal reflux where you have all those symptoms as well as what we call extraesophageal reflux. And the typical symptoms of those are uh, perhaps a voice change but typically a, a, what we call a globus sensation or a sensation of a lump in the throat usually early in the morning, but it can uh, persist throughout the day. Clearing the throat, frequent clearing of the throat, sometimes a nocturnal cough, so coughing primarily at nighttime. It's usually a dry, non-productive cough. Sensation of mucus, like I said, and then also voice changes. And they can be subtle, they can be rather dramatic, they can wax and wane. Um, and so when we take a look at those people, obviously we do want to make sure they don't have any evidence for chronic sinus disease as a source for a true postnasal drip. But since we generally produce about a quart and a half of mucus in our nose and sinuses a day and swallow it, um, if I don't see it running down the back of the throat, I usually consider that the normal production of, of mucus from the nose and sinuses. So then what we end up doing is we, we, I have them fill out a reflux questionnaire and it's a series of 10 questions that gauge from one to five, or zero to five, I should say, whether you're actually having those symptoms pertaining to the extraesophageal reflux. If you score more than 13 on that questionnaire, it's called the reflux symptom index, then it's likely that reflux is a source of, of some of your symptoms at least. So if we, if we um, give them the handout and they score more than that, we usually do end up performing what's called a flexible endoscopy in the office. We spray their nose, we, we anesthetize the nose, and we pass a thin flexible scope through the nose to look at the voice box area itself. Typically what we're looking for is redness, some swelling of the back end of the voice box, which is also the upper end of the feeding tube. They can also have swelling of the vocal cords. It's pretty characteristic, although oftentimes the most common finding for people who have extraesophageal reflux is actually a fairly normal exam. But what I'm also looking for is, do they have increased mucus in their nose, in the back of their nose? Do they have any purulent drainage in their nose that would signal a sinus infection? Um, so if I see the redness and I see the inflammation, I usually do tell those people, you've probably got extraesophageal reflux. They may or may not have true heartburn or indigestion. Sometimes they'll have already been on a reflux medicine. A lot of times they won't have been on anything. So I'll put them on something over the counter to start with, something called ranitidine or, or um, famotidine, Pepsid or Zantac. They're, they're over the counter medicines that you can take nightly. And I'll talk with them. The most important thing about this extra soft your reflux is its diet modification. In our society nowadays, we have a lot of prepackaged foods which have high acid content. Even our bottled water is not neutral pH because it's got preservatives in it. So I talk with them about the things that trigger reflux tomato products, onions, peppermint, spearmint, fatty foods, spicy foods, caffeine, chocolate, tobacco, and alcohol. And invariably they say, that's everything I like. <laughs> but it is true diet modification. It, and you know, most of us have suffered that from time to time. You can probably think of when you've had that lump in the throat sensation. There's nothing serious. However, there are some things that we do want to make sure of. People who smoke, we want to definitely take a look at those people because if you smoke, you are at risk for head and neck cancer. And those can present with, those people can present with very similar symptoms to the patient with benign extraesophageal reflux. They can have voice changes. They will oftentimes have weight loss, referred ear pain, um, difficulty, progressive difficulty swallowing, which is a little bit different from intermittent reflux difficulty swallowing. So I always ask them, do you have problems handling pills? handling solid food, handling liquids. Certainly if it's all three and it's progressive and they're smoking, those people I want to make sure they don't have a head and neck cancer or an esophageal cancer, which I can't see in the office. So those people either need referral to a gastroenterologist for a scoping, or if I'm going to take a look at the voice box in the operating room, then I'll usually do the esophagoscopy myself. I think that People who smoke definitely need to be evaluated. I think people who don't smoke, who have never smoked, who get this occasionally, 
say they have a pizza and then they feel that same, those same symptoms. I think certainly you can try one diet modification. You can also try just over-the-counter Zantac or Pepsi for a month, I would say for a month. And if, if that alleviates those symptoms, then I think you've gotten your answer. You can also certainly go to your primary care doctor um, for, uh, for the same evaluation for that. But if that persists, then again, we have the technology because we have the ability to scope people to take a look and kind of confirm that. But the most important thing is the diet modification, and that's the hardest for people to do because no one wants to change the foods that they like that, that can trigger it. But one thing that I, people often are surprised at is if I tell them that the peppermint and the spearmint can trigger it, a lot of people complain of sore throats, which is another symptom, and they, what do they do? They pop a peppermint or a spearmint in there to help with the sore throat. Well, lo and behold, it's probably increasing the reflux.